large crowd at Tanaday, swollen by around 5,000 Hearts fans. Testament to the pulling power of the Edinburgh club when doing well. Hearts in the mouths for the visiting support as Barry Robson tested Craig Gordon. The young keeper showing strong hands to push the ball out of harm's way. If Hearts were looking to underline their credentials, they wasted little time in delivering another reminder that they are up for the challenge this season. Stephen Presley heading them on their way back to the top of the table after just six minutes. George Burley's men went into the game knowing that only goal difference could keep them off the top spot if they were to win. The message delivered loud and clear. It is still ridiculously early, of course, but there hangs about Hearts a belief that this is a season when they can really, truly rock the old firm boat. And that belief was translated into hard evidence by Roman Bednar. Twelve minutes gone and a spectacular start for the Gorgi side. Question marks on the defending. The answer's coming from rampant hearts. The hit and hope came good thanks to excellent control and an eye for goal from Bednar. There have been plenty of false dawns for Hearts in the past, of course. This might prove to be another. But the supporters are lapping it up. The movement and awareness was too much for United in the early stages. They don't face the Glasgow clubs for several weeks, but Hearts would fancy their chances right now against the big two who are still trying to set out their stalls for this season. Only Stilly prevented a third goal. United fought back and you feel they must have a better season than last time, especially with Lee Miller always ready to take the half chance. There's no doubt he'll prove his worth in the coming months. And if Jim McIntyre had been a fraction more accurate with his header, United might have had a lifeline back into the game. Frustration for the United man, Gordon, was rooted to the spot. Yes, hearts were good, but United showed enough to suggest they weren't out of contention, and Gordon came to the rescue for the visitors. The flying save from Robson's header was an important one, with a feeling growing that if United could get one back, they could take something from the game. The football was pretty, it was almost pretty effective too, an offside flag stifling the celebrations. Close enough call, but Miller marginally ahead of the defender. Injury has forced Paul Hartley out of the Scotland squad for the game with Austria, which is bad news for Walter Smith, but he's capable of this kind of skill, and he'll feel he should have scored there. Hearts finished strongly. The run of substitute Lee Wallace was good enough to earn a reward. Still, he had other ideas. Wallace just one of several Scots mixed up with the Europeans in this side. George Burley wants to strengthen further, and that's bad news for the rest in the SPL if his next signing or two prove as adept as those he has already brought to the club. Rudy Scatchel rammed home the message that Hart's intentions are intact. <laughs> and with this following, and in this kind of form, they will take some beating. Hearts fans have plenty to celebrate these days, a new owner with new ambitions to match, but just how good are they? Against United, they were excellent. It was their movement that caused United problems all day. Here Bednar goes wide to allow Michelinus to space in behind, and eventually they win a corner. This time Bednar and Michelinus team up again. Bednar stays long, allowing Michelinus the opportunity to play a 1-2 with Nielsen. Cross, not the best, but Hearts dangerous in attack. Latest signing, Takas Fisas breaks forward on the left. Rudy Scatchel gets himself wide. Bednar comes short. And eventually they create another crossing opportunity. <laughs> Bednar and Michelinus work in tandem again here. Nielsen on the ball. Michelinus goes short. Bednar stays long. And he uses his strength to receive Nielsen's pass. And once again, he win a corner. Much has been made of Hart's foreign contingent, but I wouldn't underestimate the influence of captain Stephen Presley or Paul Hartley. Quite simply, Presley here keeps the ball away from the danger area. And Edgar Jankowskis is left in no uncertain terms that his captain wants a bit more from him. This was one of United's best chances to break away and get themselves back into the game, but Presley's defending is exceptional. 
What an example this is of Paul Hartley's tremendous energy levels and desire to get into the box. Lee Wallace is 15 yards in front of Hartley when he picks the ball up, but as he drives forward, look who's the first to be looking for a rebound. No wonder George Burley gave him a new three-year deal. One controversial moment that referee Charlie Richmond clearly missed was this clash between Mikel Linus and Robson in the first half. Robson, desperate to get into the box, uses plenty of force to get free of his marker. But he needn't worry, the SFA tend only to clamp down on incidents like this when it involves a player from the old firm. Lucky boy. Fascinating as well, I'll tell you. Uh, Fraser, we've had quite a lot of laddies emailing us to say they're on hearts <laughs> at 400 to 1 for the title. Can I tell you, Ladbrokes and Hills today cut them to 12 and 14 to 1. It's dramatic. It's incredible. I mean, it's very early in the season, Jim, I have to say. I mean, the, the results have, have been terrific. And uh, it's great to see a core of Scots in the in their team as well, and I hope they don't forget about that because the foreign players are bringing in, yes, they have got talent as well, but uh, I hope the, the younger lads at Hearts don't get, get forgotten. But uh, any club that challenges the old firm is good for, for Scottish football. Aberdeen we saw yesterday as well, Hibs for all of last season, and Hearts as well, and long may it continue. And Andy, the gentleman there might get his wish because George Burley said after the match on Saturday he'll have two new players in before the transfer window closes. Yeah, I spoke to him last week. I think he's very keen on getting someone in to compete with Robbie Nielsen in that right-back area. And if he can get someone with a bit of quality there, then he's got a really solid-looking back four. And possibly, I think, uh, another midfield player. And that would give him the strength and depth that he'd probably need once he picks up a couple of injuries in 